good people of YouTube, Mount Batten here. Today I'm bringing you guys a Palmern guide. Now, I've seen this ship a whole lot in randoms and in ranked, and it's really popular. I'm very glad that it's popular because it's a it's a ship that promotes a very aggressive playstyle, very much in the front playstyle, and not a sitting in the back sniping playstyle. So it's very, very, very good in my opinion that this ship is so popular. And today I'm going to just walk you guys through how I have my Palmer set up and a straight up guide just for this ship. I think this is one of the first times I've done an actual just individual ship guide. So the way I have Palmer, oh by the way, if you want to go straight to the gameplay portion where I break down the gameplay uh, timestamp right here, if you want to see my module in Campton build, that's what we're about to go through right here. Now I am assuming that you guys do know most of the Palmer quirks and gimmicks. If you want to see a breakdown of that, please go check out my Palmer in first and second. Well, actually, just the first impression video. I go through all the ship's unique features and such in that video, but this is more of a playing guide rather than a breakdown of the ship in and of itself. So let's go ahead and look at the equipment. So this is how I have my Palmer built. I have Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 that increases the survivability of the secondary guns. I have Damage Con 1 because fires suck. I have secondary battery modification 1, which decreases the dispersion, increases the firing range of the secondaries. And I have damage con mod 2, because again, fires suck. And I have concealment systems mod 1, to help rein in that German concealment range. And auxiliary armaments mod 2, which decreases the reload time of the secondary guns, and also increases the effectiveness of the AA guns, which helps out the Palmer in many regards. And of course, Palmer does have hydroacoustic search and a heal. Does not get the catapult plane. If it would, then it would have literally every uh, gimmick in the German toolbox. So let's go ahead and look at my captain build now. Now, Luchens, he's not a must have for Palmer in order to get it to quote unquote work, but he's very, very nice if you do have him. I would of course recommend getting Palmer first with the coal, then going back and picking up Luchens because Luchens can work on just about, well, actually every single German battleship uh, on every single tier except for, like, Prince Idol Friedrich. So he's a good investment if you do like German battleships. So here we go with my breakdown. So I take preventive maintenance because, again, uh, not having your... Now, apparently they changed this a while back. Preventive maintenance no longer covers your secondary turrets. However, since you are going to be in pretty close range fights, a lot of times they it does cover the main turrets and the torpedo tubes, which does help a lot on Palmer, so I would still recommend getting that. MLG turrets, because when you are in a brawling situation, you need that quicker turret rotation. That has saved my butt many, many, many a time. Adrenaline rush, of course, on any battleship. Actually, on just about every ship in the game, I'm pretty sure everybody takes adrenaline rush. That decreases the reload time of the ship's armaments as the ship's health deple gets depleted. BFT for even quicker reload time on the secondary guns, and again, it also helps your AA out. Superintendent for that extra heal and extra hydroacoustic search. AFT to push the secondary guns out to that 11.5 kilometer max range, and manual fire for secondaries. Now, before anybody even asks about IFHE, do not take this on Palmer. There's no reason to take it on any, on any German battleship, in my opinion. People are always bringing up how, oh, it's not a real full secondary build. If you don't have IFHE, you don't need it on the German ships. It's a waste of four points. Yes, it does get your second, all of your secondary guns over that 32 millimeter penetration threshold, but you are gipping yourself in the fire chance department of your secondaries. So let's go take a look at that right now. Now, part of the strategy that I present to you guys in the gameplays portion has a lot to do with the chances of starting a fire. So if you look at your secondary armaments right now, they have a 5% chance of starting a fire on the 105s and an 8% chance of starting a fire on the 150s. Now the 150s can pin 32, 32 millimeters of armor, they can actually pin 38 millimeters of armor. The second, the um, 105s can only pin 26 millimeters of armor, but they have a 5% chance of starting a fire and they reload in 2.3 seconds. Now. If you go and look at a lot of superstructures of the tier eight of tier nine ships, uh, for example, let me just pull up uh, just the where's the Missouri or the yeah there's the Missouri okay. So right off the bat, most of the secondaries are going to be landing somewhere around here. This is all 19 millimeters of armor. 
Palmer's secondary dispersion pattern, as you'll see in the gameplay section, is all over the place. So most tier 9 battleships, except for like the Ismo, have plenty of superstructure for them to hit. So you don't really need to pin 32 millimeters of armor. And plus, if you look at where most of the secondaries are going to be hitting, you'd have to be able to pin 38 millimeters of armor just on the American battleships, for example. Now you could pin the the bow and the upper bow armor, and the, I mean the bow deck armor, with 32 millimeters of armor, but you're not pinning any of this except with the 150s. Um, now the British battleships, of course, those things are coated in 32 millimeters of armor. Let's go take a peek at uh, the Lion. So the Lion, yeah, you know it's coated in 32, but most lines aren't going to be getting within your secondary range. So they're going to be staying well out of your secondary range and just spamming HE at you. And if they do get within your secondary range, then, well, they're dead already because they're that close to you. And let's just take a quick quick peek at a ship that will be within your secondary range a lot, the Savesky Soyuz, if you run across this boy. So yeah, 32 millimeters of the upper, I'm, I'm sorry, why well, am I calling it the upper armor, of the armored deck on the bow, the bow armor, but then look, it's 60 millimeters of deck armor. Y your HE is not getting through that, and on the side, 60, 375, yeah, but the superstructure again, only 19 millimeters. So you're trading the chance for any shell that hits along anywhere on this deck to start a fire. You're trading a 5% chance down to a 2.5% chance of that happening to pin just the bow area of most tier 9 battleships. Most cruisers you will be able to pin with the 105s. So the argument for trading, you know, half of your fire chance to just pin a little bit more of most battleships that you're going to be brawling doesn't make sense in my opinion. Plus, keep in mind that if you do take IFHE, you are also trading this 34% chance of fire on your main battery guns down to like, what, what's that going to be, like a 17, to a 17% chance of starting fire with your 15 inch guns which is going to play a huge part in the strategy that I will present to you in the next section so no don't take IFHE on Pomeran. Okay with the captain and module build out of the way I'm going to go ahead and get into the strategy of playing the Pomeran that's been proven most effective for me and I would very much encourage you guys to use, to use this strategy if you want to get at least in my opinion some of the best performance out of the Palmer that you can. Alright guys here we are this is a tier 9 game surprisingly even with ranked sprints going on right now. So one of the first things you want to do in the Palmer is you want to see me do this here for a couple of minutes just kind of just hang to the back and get a feel for what way the teams are going to go see what size the enemy team is going to go to see what side your team is going to go to and also right off the bat this is far from an ideal German battleship map there's a lot of open water on this map not a lot of island cover so it is more important to really see where your team is going to go where you're going to have support where you're not going to have support on this map and it's a carrier game too and one of the trade-offs for Palmer and having torpedoes and good secondaries and hydro is that it doesn't have a whole lot of AA against kind of the turpits of tier 9. So right now I'm just going to kind of hang in the back. I start to go toward the A cap because that is the ideal place for a German battleship on this map. Somewhere between the A and B cap. C is just wide open water. Those islands you see on the map at C, if you're not familiar with this map, or just low down islands, not really enough room to take cover or anything and of course the reason being you, why you don't want to be caught out in the open in a German battleship is that you will get focused down right away and just get melted so right, right off the bat no one's going to A so I'm like ah, crap well looks like we're gonna to have to go into B and C and play a little bit in the open so I start to turn around to head on over to B and C and if you look at their team it's looking like they've got about four ships that are heading on over to the B camp got a Lion, a Mainz, a Palmern, and a Sharn. And then there's a couple of ships over here, the St. Louis and the Fiji, and it's looking like they're wanting to go to the B cap. So I'm like, okay, you know, uh, I feel bad for these guys if I don't go. So then I start to just keep turning and heading on over there. Now, right here, 
normally I wouldn't recommend taking opening shots in a German battleship just because of their not so great dispersion at long range, but I held it until I thought I could get a good salvo out on that line. He was perfectly broadside to me. I fired and unfortunately I missed. Plus there were planes coming on over to me anyway, so I would have gotten detected either way, so I figured I might as well take the shot rather than uh, just getting detected by the planes for nothing. So I'm, as you see right here, I'm throttling down to about half throttle. That's another thing you can do when you get spotted in a battleship is if you're spotted, nobody fires at you, you go undetected. You know a lot of people, they will be holding their, their shot until they can kind of get a good idea of what direction you're going and how fast you're going. And then when you go undetected, they'll just let their shots go anyway. So slamming on the brakes is a good way to throw those shots off. So I did get a pretty good hit on that main. Unfortunately, it was a lot of overpins, but still 7,000 damage on a ship that doesn't have a hill. So good damage there. So now I see there's a Fiji and a Lion heading over to A, and I'm a sucker for going out and supporting those one or two ships that go on the all flank because they really do need help. So now I decide I'm going to head on over to A. And it also looks like a lot of their team's heading over to A as well. So it's a bit of a dicey situation, but it looks like the Sea Cap has more than enough help. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ships over at sea facing just one, two, three, four enemy ships. Plus, uh, I mean, the sea, if you want to count that as a surface ship. So right now, the Sharnars is doing what a lot of Palmer players that I've been seeing do. And they're just inting into the cap. He's going full throttle straight into the cap. And he's got pretty good reason to do that because it's only a, there's only a Fijian lion detected over here at this point. And the lion's already down to half health. So... While a questionable decision, it's easy to see why he thought it was safe to do this. So, in Palmer right now, I'm about 17 kilometers out. I'm trying to get an idea of where he's going, if he's going to turn or not. But let's say he's just going to go ahead and sell in a straight line. And again, I'm waiting to get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. And I'm watching my detection range too, because even with concealment module, the detection range of Palmer is still 15.1 kilometers. I let my shots go right before he crosses my detection threshold, and some pretty good hits in 5k there and I actually bump off of this lion so now the lion's obviously falling back because he's at half health and that's a reasonable decision to do and I start to turn out here a little bit but then the shorn horse doesn't respond to my shots it looks like he's still trying to hit the lion or maybe the st. Louis behind me so now I'm only 12 kilometers away and he this guy's still selling a straight line something you do not want to do in any battleship period so 12 kilometers away and mm, one over pin. Gotta love that 1.5 sigma. So now he's in my secondary range. And here we go. So the secondaries on Palmer, and they are not as accurate as the as the FDG secondaries, but as you can see, they're still pretty good. Got already got four hits on Schronhorst and a fire. And if you notice too, secondaries don't increase your detection range. So right now, my secondary is still getting shots off on this Schronhorst, and I, well, I was undetected but I'm not anymore. Also, the Fiji was kind enough to lay down a smoke screen and then he left it, so I figure, heck, I'm going to use it now. Eight kilometers away from the Sean Horse, look at that dispersion all over the place, but since we're so close, we get a nice 17,000 damage hit right here. Now notice, the Palmer up in front of me, he's still coming toward us because, again, there's only like three or, four, three or four friendly ships over here, so he's got good reason to push. And right now, I'm starting to do a gamer turn. Gamer turns basically a turn where you turn in broadside in front of it, in front of enemy ships when it's quite obvious what you're doing. So, I'm laying bait for this Palmer. I'm broadside onto him. I'm angled just enough to to where I'll probably bounce his shells. And now I'm going to slowly accelerate. And mm, he got my upper armor there, so the, those didn't bounce. They would have bounced if he would have hit my belt armor. So now I'm going to accelerate because he's well within my secondary range and since it's a Palmer and, and I'm a Palmer we are going to have the same top speed and he is taking the bait and charging me so now I'm going to just accelerate a little bit to kind of draw him in and waggle that bait in front of his face I've switched over to HE now because he's bowing to me so doesn't start a fire that salvo but the idea here is I want to keep that Palmer in my secondary range for as long as I can so my secondaries can work him over. And since he's bowing to me, oh, there's the fire from the secondary. Since he's bowing to me, I'm just going to throw in my rear turrets HE on top of the secondary guns to just burn through him. And he is taking this bait hard. Now, at this point, he has two choices. 
he can either continue to sell straight on into me, he can throw it in reverse, or he can, well, he has three choices, or he can turn. If he turns, load, HE, uh, load AP, blap him, there's a fire from my main guns. Or if he's going to stay bowing like it appears he's going to, just burn him. Now, at this angle, any shells that he fires at me, they're either just going to bounce off my belt, or you might get a couple of pins on my upper belt, but overall, he can't really hurt me that much. And it looks like he doesn't have a secondary build on his Palmer because his secondaries aren't even shooting at me at this point. And he's also focused on the St. Louis as well. So right now, I'm at 72,000 damage, and most of it's from this Palmer. About, uh, about 20k of that is from the Shorn Horse. But again, you just got to buy time for your secondary guns to chew through the enemy ships. Now I'm in smoke. Now once I my bloom goes down, I'll be completely undetected. Actually, no, I'm still detected. What in the world is detecting me? No, I did fire. Okay. So there we go. My main gun's bloom went down, and now I'm undetected and just burning away this Palmer. And Fiji gets him. Now it's time to do work on the Neptune. So I do have HE loaded. Would be better to have AP loaded in this situation because it is a, a Neptune and has barely any armor. And that's also where Luchin comes in handy. He has his secondary armament expert skill, which you notice popped off a little while ago, at 100 secondary hits, where you get an additional 15% boost to your secondary gun's reload time. So now my secondaries have probably under a two second reload time with Adrenaline Rush and Lucius' skill activated. So right there is ideally what you want to do in most situations with the Palmer. Turn, bait the enemy ship into charging you, and by the time they realize their mistake, they're so committed to chasing you, they can either only continue to chase you, reverse, or turn, which in any situation is just damage for you. Uh, Neptune's turning out, I get my front two turrets off on him, and... <laughs> All it takes is one, and there's 12k off of the Neptune. Spin around, get my rear turrets on target, and let them go as well. So, now in this situation, it's um, uh, it's not looking that great. And, oh, right here, that really annoyed me. I didn't catch that till, um I realized my secondaries weren't firing. I meant to click on the Mayoko, but for some reason, the game thought I clicked on the Drake, even though I clearly clicked on the hull of the Mayoko. So I'm waiting for him to turn, he gets turned. Now, Mains is also raining some HE down to me, so I'm trying to keep an eye on him. Unfortunately, those shells hit. There goes my torpedo tubes on the left side of my ship. Get my rear turrets out on the Mayoko. Realize that my secondary guns aren't firing for some reason. And goodbye, Mayoko, just as my secondaries finally start the fire. So now, it's looking like it's good for us. We are only down four ships, enemy team is down five ships, and their only DD is sunk as well. However... Um, you may notice that there's not many an enemy ship sunk at, uh, at the sea cap. And most of the ships sunk at the sea cap are our team, so that's not that's not that good of a sign. So now I've got a choice to make here. I can go to the sea cap and try to help finish off the York and the Lion. Or I can turn around... Oop, there goes our Lion. I can turn around, help our Fiji and St. Louis help uh, cap capture the A cap. And that's what I choose to do because we have the sea cap. Um, Graf Zeppelin, for some reason, is in the sea cap. I mean, I, I appreciate an aggressive Graf Zeppelin, but, um, normally toward more of the end of the game and not the middle of the game, because now we are both tied on the amount of ships that are lost. So I pop my hill, and the thing about fires and hills and damage cons, it's a balancing game, especially in a German BB. You have to find the happy medium between, yeah, it's just one fire, I'll let it burn, versus, okay, do I want to use my damage con now, or do I want to use my heal? I chose to use my heal right now, let that fire burn, because I'm in front of a drake and there's, and a lion. So, yeah, I could have popped the damage con to take care of the one fire, but then if that lion hits me or the drake hits me, I can easily have three or four fires on me in an instant. Unfortunately, I didn't notice the broadside Neptune and already fired on the drake, but I do get a good hit there on the drake for about, uh, that was 11k. Again, trying to get into this uh, Nept, this uh, Saint Louis, not the Saint Louis, this Fiji smoke screen, which I do manage to get into. So I get into the smoke screen. I go undetected. And I pop my damage con. Now the thing with the damage con, for those of you that don't know, the entire time it's running too, you will not get any new fires set on you or any floods. So as long as it's running, you're good. And I line up all four turrets on the Neptune. Only did this because I was in smoke and could get away with lining up. Uh, without getting spotted by the Lion, and there we go, take care of the Neptune for 26,000 damage and a devastating strike. The Mainz is back there, being a, actually a pretty good Mainz player. Um, again, unfortunately, my guns are reloading, or I could have lapped him here as well. 
And just on the cusp of being within my secondary range, but then I continue to turn. Again, playing with my throttle and stuff, trying to throw his shots off. And yeah, you know, battleships aren't the fastest thing, but look at that. Slow down, turn, most of those shells missed. Just doing that little bit of maneuvering threw off his shots that much. With a lot of these HE spammy ships, most of them have pretty long flight times, like the mains and the um, Wooster. The mains isn't as bad as the Wooster, but, you know, it's not, ex it's not exactly a Soviet HE like the small lens, because that's annoying, because that's almost impossible to dodge if you're playing against a good main, uh, small lens player. Alright, so now at this point I've gone undetected, and the mains is behind an island where you can't shoot me, so I'm turning around to get into the A cap. And there comes the HE from the Lion. Unfortunately, I'm spotted by planes, and the Lion managed to get their shots off without being uh, detected. Looks like he's on the other side of the B cap right now, on the other side of those islands, staying undetected. So now at this point, we are losing the C cap, but if we manage to capture the A cap, we will balance out their, uh, we will balance out the points gain. Well, actually, we're ahead in points, so all we need to do is capture the A cap to ensure that we stay ahead in points and just hold A and B and it's our game. And Shokaku's playing Spider-Man once again. I'm setting my uh, AA sector to try and get down, uh, get those planes down as fast as possible. Alright, so Mains is spotted once again. Looks like he's backing up. i got my secondaries ready on him. Now, this late game is... Ooh, God, big hit there from the land. The line. Now this late game is normally when ships like the Palmer and Shine, especially if you manage to keep your health mostly intact like I have so far, because now you can really afford to throw yourself at some of these low health ships and get in close with them and just finish them off because you have that great armor for brawling and you have most of your health most of your health intact. Um, now that doesn't mean sit in the back and try to preserve your full health, no. Be there for your team, tank for your team, and you'll have plenty of health left over if you play smart. Alright, so unfortunately, I just lost all my torpedo tubes there, and now I have a fire on the Palmer, and we've got carrier drop torpedoes coming in. But Fiji, again, dropping a smoke screen. Don't know if you meant to do this on purpose or not, but I'm just going to go ahead and slip into that smoke screen, go undetected. Drake showed me a beautiful broadside there. Let him have it with my front two guns. Thankfully, he didn't start another fire there. Remove most of his health. And now I'm undetected once again in the smoke screen. Have my secondary set on the mains. Pop my hydro just in case. Uh, someone took a blind, blind shot at me and got a pretty good hit. And now I'm actually out of hills at this point. But it's only 17 seconds until my damage con comes back up. So I'm getting my turrets pointed in the direction of the mains. If you look right here, all of our ships except for the Graf Zeppelin are now in this, this, um, this smoke screen. Let my front two guns rip on the on the mains, get him down, and now we have a pretty good lead on the enemy team. Have my hydro. This other thing, never take hydro for granted. It is a very, very good skill to have on uh, a very, very, very good because it will have underwing battleships very useful. Like in this situation, I could see these torpedoes. Um, unfortunately, they did run out, so I didn't really have to move up. But the smoke screen was dissipating. And now I have no hills left. All I have left is 19,000 health, and now I have to take on a lion. So notice the York in the back. Get my secondaries going off on the lion, and get my main guns going off on the York. So I'm spreading out the amount of damage I'm doing to two ships, because the lion's presenting a much better uh, target than the lion. I mean, the York's presenting a much better target than the lion. My secondary gun's going on the York as well. So I think, you know, like I said earlier, the secondaries on the Palmer can pin most of the armor of the cruisers that you're going to meet, so that's why I have them going off on the York. Lions retreat from to behind that island, so mm, if you want to start that fire, I would have continued to survive and probably taken out the York a bit quicker. Alright, so all in all, and four people start talking about you yeah, you should have fire prevention and this and that, look, the last three ships alive on the enemy team was a Drake and two Lions. I don't care if you got fire prevention, basics of survivability, all that jazz on your ship. You can't survive indefinitely against two lions and a drake with that with a anti-fire build. I promise you, you might live one or two salvos more than someone who doesn't have it, but you're going down because lions he doesn't care about anything, and Drake is just the omega f flamethrower. So although we didn't win that match, I did do 184,000 damage. I was top of the team, and 
if you take those tips that I, that I showed you, the baiting people into your secondaries, keeping them within your secondary range, and just kiting out and just melting them with your secondary guns and HE from your main battery guns, you will start to see some very, very large damage numbers in Palmer. And as you guys saw there, if the friendly team could have held on to C, that would have been an easy win for us. Although it was a very close game and we didn't win, but I had a good match. I did a decent bit of damage. I sunk three ships and it was a pretty fun match, so I'm not upset that we lost it. I only really get upset when you have those matches where it's like, you know, your team just gets wiped out in six or seven minutes. Then I, I get pretty ticked off if I'm getting match after match after match like that. But games like this where it's pretty close and it's interesting all the way through, that's what I really enjoy about this game. And I still do get those games from time to time. It's kind of weird. The game's kind of flipped around to where we used to get the blowout matches every now and then, but most of the matches were pretty good and pretty close all the way through to now where it's the reverse, where it's like blowout matches are everywhere and you get a couple of good games here and there. But anyway, guys, that's my tips and guide for playing the Palmer. I uh, hope you, you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps out a lot of the Palmers that I'm seeing in game right now. Just remember, guys, play smart, play to the ship's strengths, get those secondaries working. Don't be afraid to use HE on bow and targets. Um, but anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. We are on our way to 20,000 subscribers, and we are getting very, very, very close to that goal. We just passed 16,000 not that long ago, and if we keep going at this rate, we'll be at 20,000 in a couple of months, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Anyway, guys, hope you're having a great day. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.